Welcome to day 22 of my 30 day security challenge. It's the month long challenge I created to help you gain control of your privacy and security online. You can follow along with the security challenge via my blog at stumzy.com where you can download the whole checklist. Each video is also curated into a playlist so it's super easy to follow along on youtube.com slash tech thing. Today we are chatting all about email privacy and security. Email privacy and security relates to everything encompassing the conversations that go on through your email email account. For decades, email has been used and originally formed as a very simple means of communication in the digital age, but over time, email became your proof of ownership and a part of your digital being. Now, email is used to verify your identity and websites, is used to change passwords, and many people use it as a private form of communication. You may think that since you have already turned on two-factor authentication and you've gone with a much stronger password, a passphrase, if you will, that your account is safe and your emails are secure, but that may not be the case. Emails can be intercepted either right on your computer, in your own account, on the email company server, during transmission, or on the receiver's computer. While I won't bore you with the nitty gritty details about protocols that email providers use or the different encryption techniques today, although I will talk about PGP very soon, today I would like to focus on some very easy ways to implement security and privacy features that you can turn on right now to make your email just a little bit harder for a third party to read. Now, running some antivirus talked about previously will definitely help with alerting you of any known malware that might be running on your machine. This could affect your email security if, for example, a keylogger was installed on the computer and it was copying all of your computer keystrokes that you type into the keyboard over to an attacker. Antivirus or malware scanners will only catch known problems, not necessarily brand new zero-day attacks, and sometimes they can flag completely legit software as being malicious. So keep that in mind with your antivirus choice. Now to safeguard your email, hopefully by now you have already turned on that two-factor authentication and you created that tough password, potentially saving it in your password manager as well. As I mentioned previously, I don't save my email password in LastPass though because it is a huge target for an attacker. So the only person that knows that password is me. And I turned on two-factor authentication as well. Oh, and by the way, this goes without saying, but never write those passwords down anywhere. Just put them in your password manager if you choose to use one. Now, like I said, I am even wary about putting my email password in my password manager, but that's probably because I'm a probably a larger target than my parents, for example, because I do a show about security. Next, never, ever, ever leave your phone or your laptop unguarded. Never leave them unlocked because that's a surefire way for somebody to come up and just snoop through your data, but never even leave, leave it unguarded. That's super important as well. Now, while locking your computer and walking away from it will keep the normal thief from breaking in, it won't stop a serious cyber criminal from getting into your data. So keep your device is locked up and keep them within your reach. Watch out for social engineering or phishing attacks. These are clever little messages or emails that are designed to look legit to the unsuspecting victim. They are made to get you to hand out personal data about yourself, be it your email address and your password, your credit card numbers, your address, and tons more. Ever had a friend randomly send you a link to download an app? Yeah, that could be a phishing scam. Gotten an email from a company asking you to verify your credit card number for a purchase. That also sounds a little fishy, and it could be phishing. Delete old accounts and old emails or email addresses that you no longer need. Storing or archiving emails from years and years and years ago could be a potential threat vector as well. Think about it. Do you have old emails from purchases that you made years ago that have your old address on them? That's usually a security question for government agencies like the IRS. They say, please choose your previous address from the list below, etc., etc. Old emails could store plain text passwords from websites that you use or phishing data about your pet's name or things of that nature. An email address is a treasure chest of information for a criminal, so deleting unnecessary emails is a great way to lessen the blow if somebody did end up getting access into your email. 
If you have several email addresses, especially old ones, it might be time to delete your old accounts and update any website profiles that were using those old accounts to sign in. Now a pro tip, change the online profiles first, then delete the email account just in case they send you a verification email. You don't wanna delete the email address and then have them send the verification email because then you wanna have access to the verification email. <laughs> Makes sense. Lastly, you may want to consider choosing a better email Email provider. I tend to use Gmail and ProtonMail, so I will focus on those, but there are many others to choose from. Google's Gmail is cool because they now offer advanced protection, which is great for folks that are commonly targets, like celebrities and journalists and people like that. It creates an additional step to log in by using a physical two-factor key instead of a code on your phone, and it also makes it harder to get back in if for some reason you got locked out. The negative though is that Gmail can be read by Google and you know that's the case because they filter specific advertisements to you alongside your email that just so happens to be about the similar topic. Now ProtonMail on the other hand can only be read by you. If you lose your password ProtonMail cannot help because their policy is zero knowledge. They also offer two-factor authentication and encryption end-to-end -end as long as your recipient also uses ProtonMail. If your recipient does not use ProtonMail you can still send them an encrypted message but they will have to click on a link and put in a secret password that you've given them. Now this doesn't necessarily work so well if you don't have another way to communicate with the person you're sending mail to because if you just put the password in the email then anybody could read it. This client also does not work with downloadable email software and they also don't track or log your emails. Now each of these offers free plans up to a certain storage amount. There are some other privacy conscious email providers out there and it's pretty easy to import and export emails from one provider all the way to the other. Always consider how likely you are to be targeted and if you need the best of the best for your email. Since I do videos about security, I'm obviously a target. If you don't do security videos, you may be well off with just two-factor authentication and a strong password, but I highly suggest due diligence before an attack happens so you don't stress after the fact. Day 22 is now complete and tomorrow is all about PGP. But first, make sure to subscribe on YouTube and hit up snubsy.com for the downloadable checklist and to skip ahead on the 30-day challenge if you want to. Again, I'm Shannon Morris and I will see you tomorrow for day 23.